Well, hey, welcome to another episode of Two Lads Garage. By popular demand, I got a gimbal. And so this episode is going to be a little different. It's just kind of me playing around with the gimbal a little bit, trying to get used to it a little bit. So, anyway, let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to kind of go through the vehicles that are at the house today and just kind of show you all around, walk around them a little bit, give me some practice of a gimbal, and also kind of tell you all what's coming up. Uh, Thunderbird's one of the more popular ones that's been on the channel. I got some things I'm going to do with that. Um, mainly, still got a few electrical gremlins going on inside. Yeah, I got this right here. This switch kind of crumbled on me. And I got one that will fit in there, but the wires are different colors. So I got to, you know, get the little um, decoder ring to figure out what does what. And we should be in good shape here. Also, I want to make sure my transmission leak stop thing, Jerry rig, holds up. But this, um... Hopefully Nut Summer, this will be one of my front runners because it has air conditioning. Oh! The other thing is this back window here. Yeah, that wrap or excuse me, that tent just did not come out good. It peeled all off. I think it's because there's such different ways of curvature on the glass. I don't know if you can really tell on this. So, what I'm thinking is actually getting the window wrap on the back with a Two Labs Garage logo on it, black wrap. Um, I don't even know if that's legal in Virginia, but um, I don't know. Touch up stuff like that and just all around right, enjoy this car. You know, like I said, I'm learning to gimbal a little bit, so have a little patience with me. Y'all wanted me to get one. I got one, and I agree I needed it. All right, where are my, where are my F-body folks at? We have us a Camaro of a channel. Now, the Camaro technically, technically, my wife hates it when I do that, is not mine. It is my wife's. She's always kind of had something for these Camaros, so she, we got one. Now, it's been off the road. That's the expiration date, so sometime in 97. It's only got 53,000 original miles. I've just been getting some stuff together, gathering some parts so we can revive this thing, and we're going to fix it together. And over here, I've put a lot out about this truck here recently. Slant 6, 1980, Dodge D150. Really has come a long ways. I'm getting ready to stick that rear view mirror on there's the button and all that stuff mm -hmm. oh. all right bear with me how do i use this daggone joystick there we go like i said i'm learning you have a few laughs at my expense i'm gonna show you in here no, the door panel's a junkyard. The dash is junkyard. The shifter is old doorknob. Seats, junkyard. The carpet's junkyard. The sill plates, ah, they're Lowe's. You thought I was going to say junkyard. Nah, that's um, just out of the floor and section of Lowe's. You have the, um, the seats F-150. The carpet is F-150. Yes, Ford. And it worked pretty good in here. <laughs> All right. And the radio's old Sony, but the knobs are from an Audi, of all things. <laughs> Shift the boot from a Honda Civic. And this right here is what we're doing for a gas tank right now. That's certain to pass inspection. No. Toolbox I found on the side of the road on trash day. So yeah, budget built. 
I think we've seen this old Dodge a few times. Um, I think I did some brake work on it, did some lights, some minor stuff on the channel. It, it has made its appearance. Um, I got some air conditioning stuff that needs to be fixed on it. But I'm gonna wait till it gets a little warmer for that. It's forever cool. It's down in the 40s today. <laughs> yeah, I'm still wearing shorts and t-shirts because that's how I roll. Got some pretty good sized timbers in the bed. This truck earns its keep. Over here, we got the GMC truck. Um, one of my first episodes and one of the best performing ones of the early episodes was me putting the shocks on this. And uh, I've, it's got the GM thing where the, the blower only works on four and five. So, I'm going to be fixing that here in the future. Jeep, it's the wife's vehicle. Uh, it's been on a few times. I don't know when it'll make an appearance again. Grain damn, Ashley, I just filmed a short episode with this. I hadn't gotten around to editing or releasing yet. I don't know if it, whether it'll come out before or after this. But whoa, no. <laughs> flip back. There you go. Yeah, and the namesake two labs garage. I got Nelly here looking at me, and Caroline scratching an itch. You feel better, baby girl? You do. Say hi, everybody. Nelly says hi. All right, the old fair lane, she's around. There we go. And been a pretty good car. Need to put some air in the tires and we'll find the keys. I think I, I think my keys got washed in a set of jeans of this. Um, but yeah, she looks a little rough on the outside, but if you look down at here, all right, behind here, behind the wheel wells, down here in the rockers, bottoms of the doors, behind the fender, yeah, you know what you aren't seeing? Rust. This is actually a very solid car. Now, I know people... Some people out there are saying, ah, that car is no good for anything because of this. Back door, this four door. You know what? Four doors, you can get the same car as a two door for a fraction of the price. Um, I'm not talking like 10% less. I'm talking like 10 times less. I love my, <laughs> people want to know why I like four doors. Well, that's a lot of reason. I can have just as much fun with this old four door, excuse me, as I could with a two door version of this car. Not to mention this is a car that I saved from going to the crusher. Literally I got from one of those cash for junk car people. Um, <laughs> paid $260 for it. And <laughs> the engine, all, the mechanical part of this car and the engine bay, all that's restored. Uh, see if I, let's see how open that hood goes while holding a gimbal. We're trying it out, might as well try everything. There we go. See, it was originally a gold car. We got us a small block in here, changed over to electronic ignition. And I did all the work on this right before I got the bright idea to have a YouTube channel. So, yeah, this would have been a pretty good one to revive and all that. But yeah, she's mechanically in great shape. But I'll tell you another little something about this car. I kind of gotten to a point where I'd lost interest in it and had started pondering the possibilities of selling or trading it. And then, my two ideas 
for the build merged. I'll give y'all a little sneak peek. We'll see who watches the video and watches the budget bill when it comes up. My two ideas were the flame job, like the old Ravel model kits of a Thunderbolt. Same red flame job in the front. Or blue, my favorite color, with like a bass boat metallic finish on it. Well, I couldn't ever decide. I got blue interior from the junkyard, so that really started to take favor. But, you know, I could use that in something else. And it kind of hit me. Flames on blue paint on the car. Poof, my... My ideas just kind of went through the roof. Something else just to give it another idea. Lake pipes. Alright, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit on this one. This is a truck I call it Morris. Anybody who's been to North Carolina from Virginia going down 168, 158, there's um, a place called Morris's Farmer's Market. They got a bunch of tractors by the road. Used to have a bunch of old pickups out there. Well, this is one of them, and this one was actually my favorite. The red and white one. And, well, that's why I decided to name it Morris. Thing is, it disappeared, I think, 2018. And I ended up finding it last year, 2022. Guy had bought it from him to use for, unfortunately, a parts truck. So the grill was missing, and you know, when he went to get the fasteners, he used a sawzall to get to the back of the um, screws. But, uh, I'll leave some of that how I patched it up for the video that's going to come out on this truck. And I attempted a revival on it. And I don't have all the experience reviving that some channels like Junkyard Digs and um, who's Vice Grip. I don't have all his experience, but I've probably done about 15 revivals. This is the only one I did not have success on. And I'm not going to get into all the whys and all now, but let's just say that engine's got to go out. I'll get into all that, though, in that video, but yeah, we're going to be doing an engine rebuild on this and all. Now, I also might notice a license plate. St. Nick. That is because every December, or at least this will be the second one since I had it, old Santa Claus borrows this truck. You notice the headlights aren't in it, and the only part of the buckets are. Um, we'll see that soon. I'm getting ready to pull this out, power wash it, and get it ready for the old Jolly Elf himself. Well, the old Pontiac Tempest. I feel like I'll be taken out and shot for this. This has always been one of my front run cars, and arguably it's been one of the ones I've had the most fun with. But a little over a year ago, I did a video where on a budget, I restored the steering wheel. I know it's kind of dark, but as you can see, there is no steering wheel on the column. It's right there. There's the pulling stuff. I need to put the steering wheel back on this thing. Bad. Also, need to rebuild the carburetor, the stock one, because I took the one that I had on it. The one that was on it was actually for a C10 pickup. Truck, or not truck um this car never really liked it ended up going on the dodge truck and the dodge truck does like it so i'm gonna rebuild the stock one for this and then we're gonna start moving this car and driving it i hate it that it's been sitting in here as long as it has because this is just it's a one family car even though i'm the third owner it's still one family just a cool, cool car. I mean, it's, th this car needs to make a comeback. Now, I do not like to keep pickup trucks in the first bay of a main garage. And it's because I have a tendency to do this mess right here. This is 
farting unacceptable. Yeah, I got no one blame but myself. But this is the Power Tour truck, 1980 F100. Really runs pretty good, but if I put a truck here, it becomes a catch-all. The other thing it does is if I put a vehicle here with a vinyl top. If I put one with a painted top here, I don't do this mess. But if I put a vinyl top car here, it'll look just like this. So, try not to do that. Now, I would like to walk around there closer to it. But the 63 Comet. That, that car has... Actually, it's been pretty reliable here the past couple of years. But up to that... It's one of these cars I question why I kept it because it just broke all the time. But I um, learned a valuable lesson from it. If y'all are getting an old car, um, check out the gas tank real good. And if it's got, just replace the gas tank. It's worth it. I could have had a whole lot more enjoyment out of this car if I just replaced the gas tank when it first came up. I do have some stuff coming up on that though because the rear end and the tail shaft need to be resealed. So at some point I'm going to plop out the drive shaft and take care of all that. But honestly, that one shares off-site storage with two other ones. Uh, the Falcon that y'all saw and my Mustang. Both of them need to come back over here. And I, that one honestly is probably going to go to storage and then come back sometime. Well, I don't want to give a time frame because when it came here, it was supposed to be here for about six weeks and the Mustang comes, stay another six weeks and the um, Falcon. Yeah, it's been here a little over a year now. The red one over there, 1965 Ford Custom. Um, a lot of people ask what's custom I get about it. Well, that was Ford's base model version of a galaxy so yes it's it's a galaxy it's a custom it's yeah box stop roof galaxy basically it's got the inline sits in it it's only um got about thirty six thousand miles on that engine it's not the original engine and i'm kind of torn because i may be putting a 390 in that car but i may leave the original six in there I don't know. I, I just can't make up my mind, but that car is very, very, very soon going to be on the channel. I got some work I need to do that. That was plan B for Power Tour this past year. Um, 24, it could possibly be plan A, but um, yeah, I need to get out and work. I need to replace the hard brake lines. And I got a new set of tires for it. I just need to put them on. The ones that are on it, I'm going to pull on that Camaro out there. I guess you saw that that was one of the things it really needed. So that's where the shop tires for the Camaro will come from. Behind that, you can barely see it from over here. But my 67 Galaxy. That's a small block. And I would say it's an automatic transmission, but no, it's actually a blown transmission. That's why that thing's all the way in the back. It's been there uh, since I believe a transmission, which has been more than a year and a half ago, maybe close to two years ago. But I've been gathering parts. That engine had some bad blow by anyway. Need to rebuild the engine. So one of my plans when I get stuff rearranged I want to put that in the back bay where that Tempest was and pull the engine out of it, pull the transmission, rebuild the engine, or put a rebuilt engine in there. I actually have another 67 289, but I'm not going to use the same transmission. I got a four speed manual, so I'm going to be converting that car to a manual. I got the pedals and all. So that's what's coming up on that. Also, I got some stuff coming up on some vehicles that are off-site. So, how about we go visit them? All right, so the first one I'm going to show you all that's off-site currently is my Granada. I haven't driven this one in a while, unfortunately, but heck, sometimes it's just the way things go. But, um, yeah, I got, I got some taillight issues I still need to resolve on this. But she's four-door. 
It's a one family car, again. I have a couple of them. There's the inside. That's not ripped, that's just glare, and it's not really represented well, but this car is very, very original, very clean car. Maybe not so much clean, but no, she doesn't have rust. It's very, very original. 250 cubic inch engine. Hood ornament is that. What are you doing? All right, hood ornament is missing. Um, got some engine work I need to do, and I'm not gonna put it on again until after that's done. Okay, as for the engine, we got some blow by. Um, we're kind of down on compression. Still got plenty of running. That thing actually runs very good. Um, but she'll float the valves and all that. So I'm thinking I'm going to end up having to pull this engine and rebuild it. And I hadn't decided, I'd almost decided that I'll just go pull this engine out and put one of my 302s in it. And I have an AOD overdrive. But I might stick somewhat original. I might take this engine, rebuild it, put it back. I don't know yet. But, um, yeah, I'll have to make that decision right now either. But I am strongly considering just putting a mild V8 in it. And by that, I mean stock cam, stock crank, stock pistons, two barrel, just basic. So, also got to finish replacing the AC compressor. But, yeah, I'm... I'm I want to bring this car back to the channel, back to the house at some point. I don't like being remote with this because it just, it's not getting the attention it deserves. All right, so we're down here with my 69 Mercury Montego down here in some off-site storage. This has not been on the channel in a while. I've had first couple episodes. I think it's about that we've seen of this. It has been down here in storage way too long. And you can see my ceiling up here. It's a little peely. I got a handheld light in one hand, so forgive me. We got us an original air conditioned car. Um, nice interior. Got, got to clean these seats up. They're a little mildewy. The back one's original. The front one is a recover. I hate it that it's in here like this. We got our engine, 302. And up, up on the firewall, we got some old air conditioner stuff. But all the bracket tray and all is missing. But I managed to, I had a friend that was parting out a car. He gave me the um, compressor and the brackets and hoses and evap core and all that from a galaxy. So we're going to try and make all that work in here. Put this car back to being air conditioned. And I do plan on changing this to a four barrel. It's, it's going to be a fairly stock four barrel. I'm going to use a stock intake, 550 CFM carburetor. Maybe a Summit carb, maybe a Holly Edelbrock. Motorcraft, who knows. But one thing that will not stay the same is down there. The exhaust manifolds. And that's because we got these. Yep, I got a set of long tube hitters, never installed. You, second hand, but never installed for this. And yeah, I got into a thing a while back where I was making tailgate benches. And I still got a few tailgates around. I might use them for something one day, who knows. Anyway, yeah, that's the Montego. What else is there with this? Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. All right, and here we also have a vintage sound radio system that's a that's kind of a neat feature but yeah my big things i just need to get this car back to the house it's just i need a better setup at the house i need a couple more garage bays but yeah now just with the way everything is i don't have anywhere to put this thing at the house sad but true all right back in here a different off-site storage area we got my 66 Mustang. Let's see if I move this out of the way. This is a hood off a of 72 Fury. Um, remind me, I'll come back to that. You know what's a great idea? Is to lock the door 
when the other door that's open is all the way up against that wall like that. Great idea. But this, I'll try to show y'all in there best I can with what little light I got. She's an automatic, no console, blue, dark blue car. It's actually a 64 and a half color. Because back in the day, my mom had a dark blue 64 and a half, so I did the same color. Thing is, she had the small block. I got a six. Now, I've pondered keeping that sit stop, but we got some broken off ears back here on, I'll try to show y'all, on the manifold, and it's leaking. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eyes open at the junkyards from Granadas and Monarchs and other stuff with a 250 cubic inch engine and get the 250 head with a bigger log. Do the two barrel conversion on it and I gotta sell long tube headers. I'm thinking this one's gonna get it, but if you ask me when I got the headers, what they were going on, it wouldn't have been the Mustang, but I'm kind of feeling it now. But anyway, if that's my Mustang. I do plan on leaving this six cylinder, but I do wanna <laughs> spice it up a little bit. I think this would be a good car for that, especially since it's one of these things I can always turn it back. Also of note on the Mustang, the Mustang was the first car I got specifically to be like a classic show car type thing. I got it. It was already running, but it needed a transmission and I need a lot of body work. And I did outsource a lot of it. I did work on it a lot myself, but I did also outsource quite a bit. But yes, the Mustang was kind of my first foray into it. Because at the time, the only two I had that were really classics were the Granada and the Mustang. And I wanted something that was kind of a mm, newer ass classic and then something that was kind of an undisputed one. That was my original goal. It's amazing I remember that because it's not how it turned out. But hey, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm a car addict and I'm not afraid to admit it. And next to that, we have got... The small block 289 1964 Falcon. And yes, I said 289 1964. Back last summer when I was working on this and I was up under it, I saw the numbers on the block. I ran the numbers. It's got a 65 289 in it. The guy I bought it from, he said it was a numbers matching motor. And if you go by the intake manifold, he's correct. I don't think he steered me wrong, but I didn't pay a numbers matching price of this car, so it doesn't bother me that it's got 289. In fact, I'll take the extra power. I do want to change the exhaust manifold, the one that dumps out the back on the driver's side instead of out the front. Yes, this one dumps out the front and goes around because I want to put dual exhaust on this and cool stuff. I got the, it's converted to a GM1 wire. Really good running car. It does have a lifter tick, which I'm gonna to have to investigate when I get it back home. I'm gonna trailer it, by the way. And I'm probably gonna end up having to pull that manifold, which is just as well, because I plan on putting a four barrel in it. And I'll check those heads too while I'm at, because if they're, I got a set of 289 heads just in case they reuse 260 heads on that. May even find me a set of 351 hits by then, who knows. Yeah, I brought it down here a little over a year ago because during the fall season, I wanted to be able to enjoy my Comet and the Mustang. So I brought the Comet home. Never brought the Mustang home. And the Comet is still there. I was supposed to work on this during the summer, but just not how things turned out. And we'll show you inside. Yeah, original interior with some parts boxes. It was originally a three on the column, now it's a three on the floor. Good stuff. I mean, this is a really nice car. I need to get back to work on it. I just, I just need to get to it. <laughs> All right, so another little side note on the Falcon. 
The Falcon was actually entered in the day with Derek contest on Vice Grip Garage, and I lost, which I didn't really figure I would win, but heck, it was worth a shot, 6,000 people entered. I still hadn't seen the fruits of that. I still hadn't seen um, the actual episode. Hopefully that'll be soon. But nonetheless, since I didn't win, and I was starting a YouTube channel, I said, you know what? I said, I am going to improvise the best way I can. <laughs> so, in satire, I kind of did some vice grip stuff on my video. The intro... Um, and then just a few sprinkled in segments, yeah. Because it was a day with Derek Carr and it didn't win. And it was all meant to be good fun. Some people thought it was hilarious. Some people got pretty upset about it. Um, if you got upset about it, I'm sorry. Was, I was just playing. It was a joke. Now, I also mentioned, y'all please don't let me forget, the um, Fury Hood. And down there we have a Fury bumper and grill and all that. And somewhere or another, I got the um, hood extensions, or not hood extensions, fender extensions. And also here, I got some Magnum 500s, they're Mopar. Down there, some Krager SS's. That's what's going to end up going on the Falcon. These slot mags, if they had been 15 inch, they'd be sitting on that Dodge truck I just did now. But they're 14. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. I should probably pick you up while I'm down here. Anyway, I digress. Back to the Fury. I've always really liked the 72 Fury. I, I know it's kind of an acquired taste, and a lot of people just don't like them, but I do. And when that junkyard up in New Kent County was closing, the one that y'all told me I need to get a gimbal, still can't remember what that brand was, a F Fing or something like that, and t kept telling me I need to get an Fing gimbal. Well, couldn't find a brand, this one I hope will satisfy everybody. But nonetheless, they had one um, the day before they were closing. And I tried and tried to buy the 72 Fury for, from them. They wouldn't sell it. So I looked up, I believe it's 69 to 73 of the same generation of Fury. Even though the 72 was a one year only front end which is what I like about it so I took the stuff that I would need to make a 69 to 73 a 72 so that's what all that's doing down here I'm, I got that for a song and a dance so anybody's got a 69 73 fury maybe a messed up grill messed up hood willing to sell it cheap let me know I will I would love to put this on and have me a 72 Fury. Well, anyway, I'm headed back to the house now. That pretty much sums up the collection, both the driver cars and the old cars for toys, whatnot. And they give you a pretty good idea of what's to come on the channel. Now, I got some other things on my wish list, you know, because I'm a car collector. And when I started the channel, I really, really wanted to base off revivals. I was inspired by some of the other channels, and I've been doing revivals my whole life. I just I know, never never videoed one before. And when I found out that there are other people doing and getting paid to do what I've been doing anyway for over 20 years, I, how could I not? But anyway... <laughs> I'm going to show just kind of a list of pictures with some captions of some things on my wish list that I'd like to get my hands of, revive, and then budget build, and just continue to keep my hobby going and entertain y'all at the same time, hopefully. So if you would please go ahead and hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully one day they'll help me out some, and I could offset the cost of my passion and entertain y'all. and. Save some old iron from the junk heap. I've done it to a few. I plan on doing it to some more. So until next time, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Take care of those projects. God bless you. And I will see you again soon.